Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebane. Today we've got a quilting play-by-play -play for you where we're gonna show you how I quilted our latest stash in with Stephanie Quilt. Uh, I finished quilting this at about one in the morning earlier this week as we were trying to get it out on time for all of our subscribers. Uh, before we get into the actual play-by-play -play where you can see GoPro footage that is hooked up to my long arm handle so you can really see what I'm doing in real time, and tell you a little bit about Stashing with Stephanie. It's a subscription club that we run here at Quilt Addicts Anonymous. We've got about 800 members in it, and each of them get 10 fat quarters once a month sent to them. Now, 10 fat quarters is not quite enough to make a quilt unless you are making a very small one, like a crib quilt or maybe a wall hanging. But uh, what we do is we come up with a pattern that is inspired by the fabric and our members get first dibs and an exclusive 20% off discount on getting additional fabric for that. So we put together what's called the finishing kit, which includes the five fat quarters they did not receive from the collection, plus background and binding. So when you put that with the bundle you already got, you can make the whole kit if you want. Now you certainly don't have to do the project that we came up with. You don't have to get any extra fabric at all. If you have another project in mind, you can use it on yardage as well um, that is coordinated from that collection. So it's a really great deal if you're trying to save some money on fabric, um, as we all are trying to save a little bit of money right about now with crazy inflation. So it's a great deal for that. You also get access to our entire Stash with Stephanie pattern library for free. So that happens the second you join, as soon as you're logged in, after you've signed up, you get dozens of quilt patterns for free that you can make. They're all fat quarter friendly, so you can bust through that stash this year. And you also get a 30% off discount on my two fat quarter books, fat quarter patchwork quilts and fat quarter workshop. So great ways to quilt in a budget this year, be able to still make some things that you enjoy, get some new fabric and get inspired. I know a lot of times people's biggest challenge is figuring out, okay, I love this fabric, but what do I do with it? And each month I try really hard to come up with a pattern that really brings that fabric to life and makes it live its best life. Now, you know, you can certainly do whatever you want with it. We've certainly seen people use the collections in older patterns as well that we've put out over the four years we've been doing this. Um, but it's, it's always fun and it's always a, a good time. So today's video though is gonna focus on how I quilted this one. And I really, I was, I was really happy with how this one turned out. I feel like the last two quilts I've done, I've had very minimal time to do it. And I'm not like super excited about how it turned out. And I didn't really have a lot of time with this one either. The whole thing took me about four to five hours to quilt from start to finish, but I was still able to really kind of do the pattern justice because I don't like when you just do the same all over thing unless it's a really pretty all over thing um, because I, I really like to accentuate if I can separate the block from the background in my choice of quilting. And if you guys followed along with our free motion quilting series earlier in the year, and if not, you can take the course um, as well. We've got kits available, and I think it was 20 or 30 videos in that um, that show you four different stitches and how you can adapt it in order to create a custom look on every quilt. And that's exactly what we did here. So you're gonna recognize the wavy line and you're gonna recognize the stipple meander. And you can just see that these are super basic stitches that if you get them down, you can adapt them to fit pretty much any shape and make it look custom without a ton of skill. So like you just get four stitches down and then you just keep playing and messing and doing variations on them until you come up with something that looks great for what it is that you're doing. All right, let's pull up the footage. I'm actually gonna watch it as, as you are watching it and give you the play-by-play -play of what was going on in my head and how I came up with this. So the first thing I always do is secure the edges of my quilt. This helps keep everything nice and square uh, when you're ready to go. All right, so now I'm doing inside the block. This is the wavy line, and I just did my wavy line from the center all the way up to the center of sort of the four corners here. So once I was able to do that, then I'm able to move down and just do my wavy line down to my other point. And now we're gonna come down to the bottom and I'm just wiggling back and forth. Um, I, I do much more longer waves when I'm working on my long arm versus my domestic. I just find it easier to work with the big space 
versus the little. All right, so now I'm gonna repeat that and there's lots of ways you can do this. I chose to still kind of create kind of a spine to come into my centers. So that way it all kind of got more dense when we came to the outsides of that diamond and a little bit looser when we were on the insides. All right, so we've got pass number two and at this point I thought we still needed more. So we're gonna do pass three now. And we're gonna do a total of four passes in here. And that's where I felt like the density was good for me. I was trying to keep about the same amount of distance um, between our lines here. And you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because it really, it's a wavy line. It's best if it's not trying to do the exact same wave because you're never gonna be able to do the exact same wave and then it will look off. So I'm just kind of arbitrarily deciding where these are, but also trying to space them somewhat evenly so that they are evenly um, distributed. Now, sometimes I don't go all the way down. Like you see, I didn't go all the way down to the point. That's because I got a little bit of thread built up down here and I wasn't, didn't have to go all the way. All right, so the one downside of doing it this way is you do have to kind of stop and start when you've got blocks in the middle of your quilt, um, but that was okay. All right, so this part I wanna talk about, this is kind of a medium scale stipple meander. The goal here is to just have smooth curves that don't cross each other, which is a fairly easy thing to accomplish once you've practiced. Um, but if you need help figuring out how to do it in the first place, we have a stencil pack that comes, um, is part of our supply list for our free motion quilting course. And you can definitely grab that and practice any of these stencils. But one thing that you'll notice that I'm doing is I'm kind of doing one half of this at a time. So right now you're seeing me go underneath and I position the long arm so that I could quilt just a teeny bit underneath and then come up and over and just fill in here. So you'll see like when we look at this one here, we can see we've got my stitch lines don't come above like right here. So this part got quilted separately from this part. That way I'm able to do one continuous stipple meander from edge to edge on the quilt. Um, but it's not gonna look like I did that when you look at it from above. Like right now, when I look at it from above right here, it doesn't look like it's two separate lines, even though this line here is separate from this line here. It looks like it all comes together as one. So that takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of thought of where am I going to do this so that I don't have to constantly stop and start, but definitely working your way up and down and kind of snaking your way through, making sure to leave room, especially when you're in these tight areas so that half of my line can be when I'm quilting through this pass and the other half is when I'm coming through this pass. Those are the things you kind of have to think through when you're planning your quilting path to start with, but once you have it down, it's super easy to just follow it going forward. And along those lines, this quilt is actually sideways. So this is the top and this is the bottom. But I loaded it on sideways. That way I would be able to quilt all the way across without stopping. And I was able to do an entire block and have it fit within the throat of my long arm. If I would have loaded it the other way, this space is too wide to go in the throat of my long arm. I wouldn't have been able to do it. There would have been a lot of stops and starts. It wouldn't have worked out very well. All right, so you can see I made it all the way across there. So now I'm gonna stop and start within a diamond. I actually think we might be quilting this block right here. I think this, yes, this is the block that is currently being quilted on camera. I don't think we have ever been that coordinated before filming one of these. But you can see I pulled my threads up through the top when I started over here because this is just out in no man's land. You know, you've gotta stop and start your threads over here. Um, there's no way around it but it's okay, it's not a ton of blocks in the quilt, so it wasn't the end of the world to have to do that. And like I said, I was able to do a very large twin um, in about four or five hours, and that included the loading and unloading of the quilt. So that's not bad at all, um, because we have good size stitching, it's not super dense. So that just goes to show you that you can do quick quilting without it you know, looking like you did this giant stipple meander over the entire thing. Cause I just, that's not me. I, and I know that sometimes people do that because out of necessity. Um, but like I saw a post on social media this week of that feeling when you load your fifth quilt on the long arm of the day. And it was a small quilt that she was loading on, but it's like, 
If you can do five quilts in a day, that is not very special quilting that you're doing. That is wham, bam, thank you, ma'am quilting. And that has a place. You know, if you're doing a bunch of charity quilts and they just need to get done, then that's okay. Um, but if it's your quilt and you spent a lot of time putting the top together, give yourself permission to spend some time doing the quilting too, because you don't have to look at it as a thing that you just need to hurry up and get done with so you can use it. You can take your time and really come up with something special for it. All right, so we are on yet another, I think I only had at most three per pass. Um, so it was really just a, a very fun, I think, quilt for me to do. Um, like I said, I got to, I always love it when I can accentuate the design. So like choosing a different quilting design, the, the wavy line that sort of followed the shape of the diamond, and then using that large all over stipple meander for the background, it helps separate it in the quilting. So that way when you see the texture, the texture also helps define the block and separate it from the background. Um, I could have done that even more by going denser with the background uh, meander that would have tampened it down a little bit more. Um, but like I said, sometimes time is an issue and you just you need to get it done because in my case, I needed to actually sleep. And I, I finished this quilt at like 1 a.m the day before, actually the day we were supposed to release it, and uh, we released it in the afternoon afterwards once we finished photographing and getting everything ready to go. Um, so if I ever look at my social media and you see that I'm doing two full quilts and going on a family vacation in one month, please just comment, Stephanie, let's question your life choices here because this is not a very good idea. So uh that that was my life this month so we're going to take a couple days off as a family to just recover because i've been working like 12 hour days for a week straight to get all those things done for you guys and then a little break and my camera is uh it it, it went down that happens sometimes on the long arm the grow pro handlebar just kind of goes down and we kind of lose it but you can see you get the gist of it super fun to do i love how this turned out I think this is absolutely fabulous and, and a great way to do something quickly, but still do the quilt justice. That's always my goal. Do the quilt justice with whatever quilting designs you choose. They don't have to be hard. Again, if this is something that you want to learn more about, we have a very extensive, like you will learn everything you need to get started free motion quilting series. And we've got a kit um, that you can use to learn all the stitches with. There's a pattern that you get for free if you get the kit. Um, and it's, it's really a fun class. We had a lot of people have a lot of fun with it. And at the end, you have a finished thing. You have a finished quilt. It works for your long arm or your domestic sewing machine. And we did it in both and did comparisons and did show and tells of how you could use stitches. But here's another one. We have a great example of how you can use two of the stitches um, that we teach you in the course. So really great, really fun, and totally doable for a beginner. Like the stipple meander is one of the first stitches people teach you when you are a new quilter. And the wavy line is not far behind that. So these are very beginner friendly quilting stitches. They can be done on your home sewing machine. This can be done with a walking foot on your home sewing machine. Maybe not the changes in direction that might be harder, but um, you totally can make this happen at home on your home sewing machine. It's gonna take longer than four to five hours because you don't have the big machine that you can just move all over, but it's still super fun. All right, check out Stash with Stephanie. This pattern is called Vintage Revisited. We've got a full tutorial on that as well. Um, and it's all strip piece, so it goes together pretty quickly. And uh, I needed that in my life this month. We needed, we needed a quick quilt and quick quilting and we were able to do that, but still have it turn out really fun. So that's our goal. Give you guys something you can do that won't take you know, hours and hours of your life to make happen so you can make more quilts and enjoy them. So, all right, check that out. Check out more about Stashing with Stephanie. If you join, I think this video is going out on the last day of the month, 30th. So if you join today, the day this video is going out, then your first bundle will ship around the 20th of July. If you wait to join until July 1st or later, then you're gonna be waiting until August 20th to get that first shipping notification. We do that so that we can send all the bundles out at the same time because we give our members a 24 hour head start on getting additional fabric and fabric does sell out. Um, 
sometimes. So we wanna make sure that they get that first dibs so that way they can get that exclusive early access. And if we were sending bundles out all throughout the month, then that wouldn't work. Anybody who had their bundle at the end of the month would have nothing left to pick from and that would not be fair. So that's why we do it. It's also a lot, it's a big production. It takes so many hours to like literally cut 8,000 fat quarters, fold them all by hand and then get them bundled and shipped off to you. And it, it takes weeks. And so we need some time to get that all ready for you as well. But as soon as you sign up, you get immediate access to all those free patterns. You can get this fabric because if you sign up today, we have already shipped this out. You're not gonna get this bundle, but you can get this kit and you can get it at a discount if you get it on your second purchase after you sign up. So make sure you check out all those things. It is super fun uh, place to be. And especially if you're looking for some more things to do at home, this is a fun one to do. It can entertain you for many, many hours. So check that out. And until next time, happy quilting.